Hello, Chris Fade at Cheat the Game coming back at you. Today we're going to be taking a look at something I've been asked a lot. And I've already went over this a little bit over at the Cheat the Game Facebook page. Usually they get the info first before YouTube does. Or the, uh, uh, the websites that host the tutorials. But um, what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at a method to find rapid fire. And I've been asked that a lot on how you do that each game is different as far as that goes basically it sums up to be like this you have different type weapons you have some that are automatic some that are semi-automatic but it doesn't really matter because they're basically structured the same way they have what's called a timer round a timer round is a timer that goes off in between each shot that tells how long it tells the game how long you must wait before it, you're allowed to fire again whether it be because of some animation or whether it be because of whatever and usually there's a time around now the slower weapons like a shotgun if you're trying to find that time around you want to use a slow weapon like a shotgun or something like that because if you use automatic weapons it's going so fast you just you're just not gonna be able to find it that way now that's one method of looking it up. That's a harder method. And that's a method I suggest you try last if other methods aren't working for you. However, Dark Bite, I want to thank for giving this method. He suggested using this method first is locate your ammo value, go into the memory view, into the uh, structure, the byte structure, and look for values that are counting up or maybe even counting down when you're firing and returning back to that previous value it started out with when you're not firing anymore and those are the ones you want to look at because those are in connection with your timer values they'll start counting up every time that timer reaches a new a new cycle it'll count okay so let's say you got a timer value over here and you got a counter over here well if let's just say that or we have a shotgun we fire around and that thing's going to count up from zero to one and float when it reaches that one, then a counter is going to count up to one. You fire another round. That counter starts again until you're able to fire again. And when it reaches its destination, that counter round will reach two. Sometimes if you modify that counter to zero or, or something like that, it confuses the timer and negates the timer and, allow, and just keeps firing because it still the game thinks you haven't fired yet. And that's what we're looking for is that counter value that's watching the timer. Okay, I hope that made sense. I'm sorry if it don't, but it'll make sense in just a moment. So thank you, Dark Bite, for this information. Now this technique is what I learned from him that he posted on the Cheat Engine forum page, and that's where I got this. So it's really not my lesson. This is more or less his. So I want to give him the credit for that. So let me go ahead. We're going to do two different games, and I'm going to do it the exact same way in both games just to show you, okay? So what we're going to use, we're going to use Sniper Elite 4, and we're going to use Metal Gear Solid 5. I'll be right back with you. Okay, this lesson is going to assume that you know how to find your ammo value because those are the areas we want to look in. Everything's tied together. When you're trying to look for cheats, you need to look with something that's related to the cheat you're looking for. Okay, uh, rapid fire, ammo, and gun values, they're all going to be somewhat together. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find our ammo value, which I've already found. So I'm, hopefully everybody understands how to do that. And I ain't got to go through it. So I'm just going to go directly to where the ammo value is. Go to the address. And I modified where it was decreasing the ammo. And here's where it's being stored. Right here. So let's just find our ammo address. Now I do know that this particular ammo address stores the internal as well as the grapple code together. So... And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use an automatic weapon. You, this particular technique, you want to use an automatic weapon because you need to see it counting up. Okay? So let's go ahead and just fire a couple rounds, bring up our ammo values right here. I believe that bottom one right there is the internal code. Let me check. Now I know the uh, numbers do not match. 
So uh, I'm not getting into that, but 29 is 95 to this game. So it's actually infinite right now. Now it's firing pretty fast now, as you can see. So, you know, what in the world would uh, rapid fire do for that? Well, it will fire a million times faster, it looks like. <laughs> but what we want to do is we want our ammo value, and that's where we're going to begin our search. Normally, you want to look for float values. Usually, you're going to find these things on float values. However, this particular game is on an integer. This is just one of the oddball ones that happens to be on an integer. But I'm going to show you how we're going to find it over here in memory view. So we're going to click the address, browse this memory region, and it brings us to our memory location. So what we want to do is this is our, we know that this right here is our ammo value, and we want to look around this area for anything that may be counting up or down and returning to its normal value. Usually they'll start at zero, sometimes they can start at negative one. They can start at actually any number, but what, usually what happens is when you start firing, it's, that counter starts watching the timer. And every time that timer reaches its max, it's, it counts off one, you're able to fire again. Counts off two, you're able to fire again. Counts off three, you're able to fire again, and so forth. That's the value we're looking for. And an easier way to see that, let's go ahead and look at it in its integer form. So what I want to do is I want to go over here to 4 byte decimal. And it'll show us these values in their normal uh, decimal forms here. So what we're looking for is we want to look around these areas for like a 0 or a 1 that starts counting up and then returns to normal when we're done. So let's take a look. Make sure that you have your infinite ammo on because you don't want to run out of ammunition doing this and you very well could all right let's take a look take a look down there you see that we got a we got something that's counting up and then return to zero when we stop see that and it it starts when it counts up to 29 that's the max it's going to go so let's increase that to 100 and let's see what it counts up to before it stops okay it's only going to allow it to go up to 100 that's good so we see that 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 counter value is in relation with our ammo and our gun what would happen if we froze that value let's make sure that's the right one yeah that's it Let's find out where it's actually writing to this address, where it's increasing it. Let's take a look. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't tell how to do that. What you want to do is you want to right-click it, go to Data Breakpoint. You want to come over here, and I always use what accesses the address because I like messing around in the, in the coding to see if I can find something better. All right, let's fire a few rounds, and we see it's increasing. That's what's increasing it right there. So let's go over to that one in memory view. I right, click on that again and show. There we go. Here we go. And you can see it's right on down from where it's decreasing our ammunition. Here's increasing. This is watching our timer, which allows us to be able to fire again. And it's only going to allow us up to its max which is what I just said at 100. So let's see what happens when we knock that out to keep that at zero. So we're going to replace with a code that does nothing. Oh, take a look at that. You see that? So what would happen if we turned on our infinite ammo? And I want to show you this because we got a little problem. With that knocked out at zero, and we turn our infinite ammo on, that cap no longer applies. It's just infinite. Watch what happens. You see that? I can't stop. I can't stop firing. So we know that that does definitely give us rapid fire, and infinite ammo inhibits it from being able to work properly. So we're going to have to do a little modification with this. 
So let's go back to the game. Let's get everything back to normal if we can. See if we can just change the gun or something. These kind of bugs you're going to be working with a lot, so there we go. Now everything's back to normal, okay. So we know that freezing that at zero, we can't turn it off. So we need to at least make it think it's fired once. So let's see if, if we can modify that instead of counting up, that it just moves one in there. So it just thinks we fired one time, hasn't reached the max, however... It doesn't show that we haven't fired maybe that will allow us to stop whenever we want to so let's go to AOB injection and we're gonna put a rapid fire one so instead of having it increase which increments by one each time we're just gonna have it move just to integer one in there oh one it just keeps moving one in there each time that way it shows that it has fired that way we can let go of the mouse button and it should allow us to stop shooting anytime we want theoretically so let's put that as rapid fire test if I can spell all right turn on our infinite ammo and let's turn on our rapid fire let's see what happens and you see that now we have rapid fire and we can stop it anytime we want to so instead of zero we needed to move one in there and we have rapid fire now these values are extremely hard to find you just got to go in there experiment find out what's going on why is it not working right and you got to try different things to come up with a solution it really helps to understand how games operate to help you figure these things out what I want to do is I want to do one more we're going to use the exact same method we just did and I'm going to use it in a totally different game made by a totally different company and we're going to see if we can find rapid fire and Metal Gear Solid 5 and I'll be right back with you oh yeah Okay, so now we're on Metal Gear Solid 5, and we're exactly where we left off on the teleport tutorial, I believe. Teleport to marker. And I'm just all I'm using are my cheats for the uh, infinite ammo suppressor and no coil accuracy and no spread, all of which I showed you how to find in previous videos that I will be happy to link you to up in the upper right hand corner. So basically what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and find the ammo value normally because some of you have been getting a little upset that I haven't been finding values because you're new to it and everything. But I'll go ahead and show this one because this is a technique also that when you're like me and hate doing math in your head, uh, this helps out a lot. We found out in this particular game that it is the chamber value plus the inventory value will equal your total ammo value and that's what we're going to be using so instead of doing the math in your head you can actually put 28 plus what's my uh, inventory 181 and you can search for it that way do a first scan and it'll bring all the values up and that's at 209 and just fall off around went 27 so we know now it's at 208 And we got two locations. I believe it's this one. I don't believe it's a static. Let's just see. Well, that's the that's the inventory value. That's that's fine. There is also a chamber value, but I do happen to know separately you're gonna find it on the total ammo value right here. But this is only in charge of your inventory. I don't mean to confuse anybody. Let's just get on with it. So let's go to browse this memory region. And we know here is our value. I'm going to go ahead and click on my cheats for the time being. So I don't lose my suppressor. Just make sure everything stays as is. There we go. All right. Okay. 
let's kind of get the game up and out of our way so we can see our structure a little bit better what I want to do is I want to go ahead and display type and I want to put these on a float these are going to be a little hard to find so we're just going to kind of look around we're looking for a zero counting up or maybe a negative one counting up I forget what it is in this game to be honest with you so we're just going to look and it won't stop so let's take keep looking here I don't I don't see it right off hand you do want to experiment with any values you come across that might be our aim coordinates right there it looks like Not really seeing anything that's okay, ain't nothing happening up here. Let's take a look down here. Huh. This one I find very interesting. Right here. I was looking at zeros is why I was, it was eluding me there for a second. But this one here is counting up from a negative one. So that's the one I'm paying attention to. Watch it. And it goes right back to negative one. And we also have one counting at zero right here. But this is the one I'm interested in right here at a negative one. And if that one doesn't work, then we're going to try this one. But I'm going to try that negative one because I believe it was a negative one if I'm not mistaken. But you want to try both of them just to be sure when you don't know. Okay. So let's put a, a break point on that one. And we're going to find out what accesses this address the same way we did with the other game. It's starting at a value and it's counting up. Okay, let's take a look here. It looks like this is where it's writing. XMMA is writing to that location. It's starting out at a negative one right here. Starting out at the negative one right here, and that looks like it. That might be just this cat. Let's see what happens if we just freeze that. Let's go to it in the. If we just froze it right there, replace with a code that does nothing. It just fires once. Okay, let's go back. What would happen if we just kept writing negative one into there? I want to auto assemble that. And we're just going to do a test script. Rapid one. Let's try that. XMM9, maybe that just holds a negative one in there and we ain't got to modify it any different. Alright, let's see what happens. Oh, take a look at that. What it's doing is just constantly moving negative one in there. Let me show you. Here it is right here. Now it's not counting anymore, as you can see when I fire. Watch. Well, that's counting a little bit. So we probably need to modify that a little farther than just that. So let's uh, let's go to it and move that back. Negative one. Click OK. And we see another location right here that it's also doing that. We could probably backtrace it to another source and modify those both at once. But let's see what's going on with this one here. What's XMM6 doing? It looks like it's trying to count up 
right here so we need that modified as well it looks like x-men 2 is holding the negative one in this one you see that so let's see if we modify this one to x-men 2 if that makes any difference all right Still trying to count. Let's put that back on negative uh, X and six, and let's just script that one out as well. I'm just going to do an inject because I'm just messing around right now. But you see, it does affect our firing rate. These are the kind of things you got to experiment with. You got to experiment with one thing, you got to experiment with something else, and you just got to keep going from there. Now take a look. Now let's take a look at it over here. Is it counting at all now? Let's take a look. Now it's holding steady right at negative one. Look how, look how that thing's shooting. So it looks like both of those codes together are the rapid fire for that particular gun, at least. Let's put on uh, no recoil accuracy and no spread with it. Now take a look. Now what you want to do later is when you get another automatic weapon, see if you can find that one. See if they're sharing the same codes. If they are, you're good to go. If not, then you may have to backtrace them all to a main source. So, but that gets you started on helping you find a rapid fire value, okay? And uh, like I say, there's other techniques to try, but we always want to try with the simple things first, and then we just go on from there. So I do hope this helps some of you guys out. Uh, you have been asking me about this. It is a complicated type subject. It's not easy to cover something like this in one lesson because this is an extremely hard value to find, and it takes some little experimentation. It really does. So you need to get into the coding, take a look around, see what's going on, experiment with a few values. Number one thing you're looking for, you're looking for it starting out at one specific value, either counting up or counting down and returning back to that value as soon as you're done shooting. Those are usually, might be connected with your timer of your firing rate, okay? So keep that in mind and you can try that in other games as well. Sometimes these are not located near the ammo code and you may have to try other things out. So uh, keep that in mind as well. All right. Come join us over at the Facebook Cheat the Game page. Uh, we got a lot of game hackers that hang out there. If, they're, if they can answer your questions, they will certainly do so. We don't get into online gaming. We don't teach online gaming. So if you got questions about how to hack online games, other than a few Facebook games or something like that where it's not really affecting other people, uh, we might be able to help you out with that, but uh, we don't we don't do online games, but we will teach you assembly We will teach you how to hack single-player offline games all day long All right, I also want to thank my partners over at the patreon. These guys are really helping me out Also, we got a new one uh, guided hacking. That's also my other site that I hang out at that I love and learn from all the time So go check them out. These guys specialize in all kind of ways to hack games and uh uh, they go well beyond cheat engines, so go check them out also. That's all I have time for, so I'm going to go ahead and cut on out of here. I'm sorry it was a little bit longer for another tut to come out. I've got some things going on right now, so it's just hard to find the time to do it. But I'll try to get some more out. We'll get into our Lua like I promised. I promise we're getting there, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, you take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. You cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, it doesn't mind cheating you. Take care now. That's how you do it.